What exactly are we expecting to happen tomorrow? But Emily, all signs right now are pointing to an event which will tell us a lot about Apple's short-term strategy and less about any new device that could revolutionize a market that Apple has yet to step into. You highlighted the fact that the likely outcome is for Apple to unveil not one but two new iPhones, with one of those specifically being a lower price device, perhaps for emerging markets. It raises questions like, well, just how much is this thing going to cost? Uh, whether there are a lot of People in China who have to pay 800 to 1,000 bucks for an iPhone, if they were to hypothetically have to pay 400 dollars, would that open a huge door for Apple? What about how much this lower-priced phone costs? Uh, Wedge Partners has estimated it could be 65 percent less to manufacture the lower-priced phone versus the new iPhone that uh, Apple's going to unveil at the higher end. And speaking of that higher end, what bells and whistles is Apple going to tell us about that would get you to go out and buy an iPhone if you recently went out and got an iPhone 5? There has been some talk about the fingerprint technology where Apple may have some flexibility, Emily, is the fact that right now Apple is gearing up to launch the new software for the iPhone, which will mean an, a different look and slightly different feel to how you use the device and, and maybe they're at a time where they can afford to focus more in the software and less on you know the bells and whistles that we all are wondering about with every new device that they uh, unveil. Now we've been talking a lot about how a cheaper iPhone would help Apple in China and other emerging markets. Is this a phone that we're expecting to be available worldwide? It, it's a hugely important question. We don't know the answer to it. However, if it is a phone that is available in the U.S. market, it does raise all sorts of questions like the battle between the carriers. For example, we've uh, profiled T-Mobile and the fact that they've done away with contracts. The challenge for them is that currently, if you have to pay 650 bucks for an iPhone, do you really want to go that way? So that's something to watch for. Does it give Apple, for example, an edge in the prepaid market here in the United States? Again, all signs pointing to things that help Apple's strategy short-term, and we'll certainly have more details tomorrow. Emily?